our first talk in the new work on paradoxes uh, online conference here at the University of Bucharest is uh, Mr. Uh, Ioannis Polikonopoulos. He is coming from the National and Capitalist Student University of Athens and also uh, in the, uh, uh, from the American College of Greece. And uh, his talk today is titled, A New Strategy for Pascal's Mother. Uh, Johnny, it's wonderful having you with us and please take it away. Thank you very much for having me. So uh, I want to talk to you about a paradox in this is your theory called Pascal's Mugging. Uh, the structure of the talk will be as follows. First of all, we're going to see Bostrom's original uh, presentation of the paradox in his uh, classic paper, Pascal's Mag in 2009, then, and which will be followed by a formal reconstruction of the paradox. Uh, then we'll see uh, Bauman's uh, attempted uh, solution, which will also be followed by a uh, formalization. And uh, in the third part, we'll uh, try to um, analyze uh, Bauman's solution in order to arrive at a new formulation of the paradox, which will uh, sidestep uh, his, uh, his move. So as in every paradox, there are going to be some uh, plausible uh, premises that we're going to reduce to absurdity. And in this case, this will be one that uh, rational agents ought to maximize expected utility. And this is the core of expected utility theory. Uh, it's a very fundamental principle in decision theory, which is widely accepted both by philosophers as well as people working in the practical or practicals of the field game theorists and so on. So I'm not going to spend any time on that. And the second one is the principle or axiom of regularity, which states that the rational agents ought to reserve the extreme values, one and zero, for tautologies and, and contradictions respectively in their probability assignments. So uh, the idea first on an intuitive level is that if something is possible, then you can't be absolutely certain that it's false. And the straightforward way to uh, translate absolute certainty level, that's the prima facie justification, I guess. If we want more something more along the lines of an argument, uh, an idea would be that it's a kind of an anti-dogmatic stance. So if, if an agent, at least in the Bayesian framework, uh, starts with a prior of zero, that Q, then the conditional probability that Q, given any other proposition R, when it is well-defined, this conditional probability will be zero. So uh, the agent, after conditionalizing on any evidence, they'll still stay at, with, at the probability zero. So in some sense, there's no way to ever leave the, the value zero. You'll just stay disbelieving uh, Q no matter what evidence is piled on again and again and again uh, in favor of Q. So let's move to the original problem. Um, so what happens here is that uh, some mysterious mugger goes up to Pascal and he gives him some a very preposterous, we'd say, a very weird story. He says something along the lines of, uh, I am an alien, I'm a communicator from the seventh dimension or some such. And they have these weird powers. Specifically, I can give you any finite amount of utility. Pascal, see, Pascal is very skeptical of this claim. But uh, due to regularity, he has to assign a positive probability to it. So he assigns a probability of 10 to the minus 15 to this claim. And that's just a number. You could have anything here. Uh, Magyar's next move is to ask the following question. What's your probability that I not only have these magical powers that I claim that I have, but that I will also use them to deliver on any promise, however extravagantly generous it may seem, that I might make to you tonight? So the idea here is that first, Magir goes up to Pascal and says, first give me a probability, and then I will give you a number of you, a, a number how much utility I promise to give you. 
and Pascal assigns a probability of 10 to the minus 16 to this claim. So uh, let's set the value of Pascal's wallet at one util. Uh, Mager then has a very straightforward uh, winning strategy. Uh, he just needs to promise that if Pascal gives him his wallet, Mager will give Pascal utility greater than 10 to the 16 utils. So he takes advantage of this idea that first you give me a probability and then I'll give you a number. And I can always give you a number so large that the expected utility of giving the wallet is going to be positive. And uh, in this sense, in this case, Mager has magged Pascal. Let's move on to the formal reconstruction. So let's say that A is the set of propositions Pascal has an opinion about, and uh, A bar is its algebra, i.e. the closure of A under logical operators. So if Q and R uh, and R are in A, then not Q, not R, Q and R, etc., are in A bar. And his credence function is a function from A bar to 0, 0,1, uh, which assigns probabilities to these propositions. And it's going to obey the three axioms of probability, as well as the axiom of regularity. Uh, so H will be the hypothesis that Mager has the ability to give Pascal any amount of utils, and G will be the proposition that Mager will give Pascal the amount of utils he will later promise. Uh, C1, then, then when, when Mager approaches Pascal and presents him with H and G, essentially he's asking him to extend C to a new credence function, which also assigns probabilities to H and G, and that will be C1. Regarding C1, Pascal tells us that uh, C1 of H is uh, 10 to the minus 15. And then he says the following when asked about the conjunction of G and H. He says that, well, if you really were an operator from the seven dimensions, if you had these uh, weird powers, then I suppose it's not such a stretch to suppose that you might also be writing this additional claim that you will give me, etc. So the conditional probability is relatively high. And then the probability of the conjunction is calculated to be 10 to the minus 16 appropriately. Uh, if we say that 10 is the amount of the amount Magyar promises, the amount of Newton Magyar promises, then the expected value of Pascal giving away his wallet is uh, shown here in equation one. And as we saw earlier, the strategy for Magyar is very straightforward. He needs only to promise uh, an n that is greater than 10 to the 16. So let's now move to Bauman's uh, solution. Bauman has the following to say that Pascal cannot determine the probability that Magyar will keep his promise independently from what Magyar promises to do. So essentially, what we said earlier, Bauman thinks it's kind of cheating, the idea that give me a probability first and then I'll give you a number of utils that I will uh, grant you. This is, there's no independent probability uh, like the one uh, Michael demands of Pascal. I think a better way to state this is that it's okay if, my, if, if Pascal gives a probability to G initially. He's free to give any, to give a probability, but the probability, as Bauman says, is not independent of the details of Magyar promise. So when Magyar does promise a specific number, Pascal is well within his epistemic rights and is actually epistemically obligated to update his credence accordingly. So the, the problem is that uh, in the original uh, uh, problem, we expected Pascal to remain at the same value he gave initially, which I think is implausible, and Bauman, I think, would agree. So this leads us to a second formalization. Uh, let's say that Pn is the proposition that Magyar promises Pascal and utils, and Gn is the proposition that Magyar will give Pascal and utils. Se2 is an extension of Se. Uh, which also assigns probabilities to these uh, uh, propositions. 
and set to n of q is the uh, credence function after conditionalization on pn. So after Magyar uh, promises, I'll give you n utils. Uh, Pascal is left with uh, this uh, credence function. And yeah. So uh, here's what uh, Bauman says about his solution. We can assume for the sake of simplicity that the larger the sum of money or the amount of utils uh, Magyar promises to deliver, the lower the probability Pascal should assign to this proposition that my, to the proposition that Magyar will stick with his promise. And uh, yeah, so what he says in our formal uh, setting here is that this uh, sequence of uh, probabilities is uh, decreasing. And additionally, that this product here is always going to be less than one. And we need this because if it if it if this product is ever greater than one, then Magyar still wins because he can just promise that specific amount, and uh, Pascal will have to give away his wallet. So this probability in uh, in equation three has to be decreasing in order to counterbalance the increasing uh, value values of n. So uh, here we have an example of such a credence function, and this is just to keep uh, Bauman and myself honest. Uh, so we just want to show that the Bauman's desideratum is consistent with the axioms of probability and regularity. There really is a credence function that satisfies these. Uh, we can return to it in the discussion if we want to. Uh, and now we'll move on to the third uh, part of the talk, where we will examine Bauman's response and try to come up with her formulation. So as we just saw, Bauman has the following to say, that we can assume for the sake of simplicity that the larger the sum of money or the amount of utils Magyar promises to deliver, the lower the probability Pascal should assign to the proposition that Magyar will stick with his claim. And uh, he gives the following illustration to motivate, to motivate this uh, idea. That suppose someone comes up to you and says, uh, okay, I need uh, 10 bucks right now, and uh, I really need them. I, I have forgotten my wallet at home. And uh, if you spot me the money I need now, I'll give them back to you tomorrow. And I'll also treat you to a coffee as a way of saying thank you. Uh, would be quite likely to help this person out. At $10, it's quite likely that they will follow through with their promise and the, the extra reward of a coffee is quite good. In contrast, if someone comes up to, uh, to us asking for $10 again and gives some preposterous claim like, I'll give you $1,000 tomorrow and treat you to dinner tonight, we'd be very skeptical in this case. And rightly so. Uh, so yeah, this is more of an illustration. Uh, but this uh, raises a question about this uh, illustration. Why, we have to ask, why is it that we are less likely to believe the person that offers $1,000 and a dinner than the one that offers $10 and a coffee? And uh, my view here is that uh, the answer is that there's a better fit with the background data. So the idea is that there are a bunch of other things I know, aside from these promises or whatever, that favor the latter's claims way more so than the former's. So for instance, I know that a bunch of things about the value of money, how our society works with money, and uh, the cost one, the, the costs of giving away these large sums of money. And this becomes even more obvious if we, if we increase the values. If someone came up to me tomorrow and told me that they give me $100,000 or a million dollars, I'd be way less to, in, inclined to trust them because that's going to destroy them financially. There's huge incentives for them to not follow through with their promise, for instance. And the more the amount of utils or money grows, the more this, uh, this utility uh, grows in their part. Another thing I know that uh, will, will act as a symmetry breaker in this sense is 
there are a bunch of scammers running around and that this is these is, these are the kinds of strategies they use. They want to promise a great gain at little cost, and they'll, they'll then they'll just run away with your, with your money. So the question at this at this stage is: Can Magyar remedy these concerns? Let's call them. Uh, and this will lead us to the formulation of the new strategy. Magyar's new strategy will consist in, in replacing the original hypothesis H that uh, Magyar is capable of giving any finite amount of utils with a new hypothesis that is going to be built inductively, uh, in each step of which um, uh, one of these concerns, let's call them or symmetry breakers, will be neutralized. So uh, the first concern may be that giving away large amounts of utility results in proportional disutility, as we discussed before. And uh, here we might uh, go with an H1 that goes as follows, H, and Magyar's abilities come at no cost to himself. And now this concern won't uh, be a way to, won't be a reason to prefer to assign higher probabilities to uh, lower uh, amounts promised. A second concern might be the existence of scams and how they operate and uh, these sort of things. And H2 in turn will be H1. And Magyar is not a scammer. He's not in that practice. So H2 is H1 with one additional concept. So it takes care of the first concern as well as the second concern. And we will continue in this way to build uh, uh, yeah, this new hypothesis that uh, Magyar will use. Uh, for, for reasons of simplicity, we will assume that these concerns are finite. Although the, this would work uh, mutatis mutandis for countably infinitely many concerns. So uh, let's go on to a formalization of this uh, new strategy. Uh, we will have a new extension of C, C3, which will also assign probabilities to all these uh, uh, propositions here. H star will be in the finite case, this uh, conjunction here. In, I have this H star, yeah, because in the infinite case, you could, you could also do the same. Um, and so the, the probability we care about here is the probability that Magyar will give us n utils and that H star is true, given that he will promise n utils. And as we see in uh, equation four, uh, this is equal to this product of probabilities here. Uh, yeah, the first of which, the probability that he will give us n, given H star and Pn, is constant. And this is just the way we've defined, in a sense, uh, eight star. Uh, we have uh, defined it specifically to make this probability constant. Um, and uh, the second one will also be constant for similar reasons that promising greater and greater amounts of utility is irrelevant to the truth of eight star the way it's been defined. So then, uh, this probability that we care about, uh, we've already said that it is constant, so let's set it equal to C. And again, this uh, thing in the this middle uh, equality here is the credence of the, the probability of Gn and H star after uh, Pascal conditionalizes on Pn. And uh, yeah, so then the expected value of Pascal giving away his wallet is going to be n. Yeah, uh, it's going to be equal to this shown in equation five. And again, Magyar has a very straightforward uh, path to victory. Um, he just needs to promise an n that is greater than one over c. And then again, he will have succeeded in uh, Magyar Pascal. 
And again, here, just to keep me honest, we have a, a credence a function that operates in the way I described uh, uh, before. And uh, yeah, this is just to show that uh, my desideratum is uh, consistent with uh, the axioms of probability and the axiom of regularity. Um, yeah. And this is the where we come to the end of the talk. Thank you very much for listening. We can move on to the discussion. All right, thank you so much.